Okay, so welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cometa Lynx. Now we are going to be offering this rifle as a package. When we get to the feature section, you will see what you're going to get for your money as well. Of course, we're going to go over the features of the gun as we do with all reviews. We'll then move into, obviously, handling, chronograph testing, which I'm not looking forward to with that gigantic bottle on the front end, I'll tell you that now. And then also target work, because this is a more expensive gun. So it definitely needs to perform downrange, otherwise, what's the point? So Cometa are going out of the way with the Lynx now with its brand new makeover, and it's not just looks either, but we'll get into that later on, of the Lynx. They're going after your BSAR 12s and such like that. And if it performs the way or as good as it looks, I think we could have a new contender on our hands. So let's take a look at features, let's see what you get for your money, and let's move on from there. Cometa Lynx, bring it on. Okay, so features, what do you get for your money? As always, we start off at the rear of the rifle where we'll find a nicely textured rubber recoil pad. Moving further along, we also have an ambidextrous and adjustable cheek piece. So lefties rejoice out there. You can raise and lower the cheek piece by simply loosening, then tightening the two grub screws on the right hand side of the stock. Very nice little feature that, and nicely finished too in the laminate. Moving on to the grip, and we do have a nice bit of checkering on the go here, which with this particular rifle, the pattern on the laminate stock really pops in the texture of the grip itself. Very nicely finished, I must say, but does it actually give us any actual grip? We'll find out in the handling section. Next up, we move on to the safety itself. Now, the safety is really interesting because it's nice to access for both left-handed and right-handed shooters. If you take a close look, you can see the bar itself very proudly protrudes either side of the trigger. Nice little touch there. The trigger is also a two-stage adjustable unit with the first, second, and the pull weight being able to be adjusted each on their own. Slightly further up, we do have a nice extra bit of checkering on the go with the Lynx logo printed into the side of the stock. They do this with the beach version of the rifle, the more standard version of the Lynx, but it's really, really nice seeing this in the laminate stock. And dare I say it, I actually think it's more eye-catching in the laminate than what you have in the standard beach versions. Moving around the other side of the rifle, you can also see the Lynx checkering on the go, but we also have a side lever cocking system. Again, that's more of a handling thing. We'll talk about that in operation as we go along. I do like the finish on this though. I like the chrome finished um, actual grip itself. It does genuinely pop against the stock. Next, we move on to the breech. This is where things get a little interesting. And again, it's a strange way that Cometa do things, but I actually really quite like it. If you have a look at the breech, there's a metal bar. Um, at the moment, it's on the left-hand side. With that, it, you can get the magazine, which has got a set of jaws on it, which will bite into the bar, which is how it locks itself in place. It's an interesting design. So unlike a ball bearing and such like that, where every now and again, you can, maybe the magazine might bounce slightly or something along those lines. If it's basically biting into the bar, the mag can't really move. It's pretty much locked in place. It's pretty interesting. The other thing is the single shot tray, which are sold separately, but we will be including in with our package deals, can also be mounted into that bar. The bar simply goes through the tray itself. So the tray can't move. Again, locked in place. I think the target shooters are really gonna like this because it's a very stable design. And you can also have the bar on the left or right hand side of the action as well. Again. Not entirely necessary, but a really, really nice bit of detail on that. Okay, so then now we move up to the pressure gauge. Now with this, you may have noticed earlier on the action, it actually says Maxfield 200 bar. That is with the standard metal bottle variants. The new links, we won't spoil too much, but I'm sure you've seen it already, uses a bit of a different system to that. Maximum fill on this is actually 300 bar, not 200. This is a very early Lynx laminate, what we've got here, basically more or less a review gun. So the action where it says Maxfield 200, you can ignore that. The new models coming out have C bottle basically for details on there. So again, it's a silly little thing, but that's just because this is a very early gun. She is a 300 bar max fill. Underneath this gauge, you have also got a very tasty bit of kit, which is the Robert Lane regulator. So with that, you're gonna be getting maximum consistency and it's a genuinely premium bit of kit that I'm very glad they put into this gun. 
Slightly further up, we get to the carbon fiber bottle. Now this is something that a lot of people a while ago were saying, at least what we've seen online, people were saying that if you're paying over a thousand pound for a gun, a carbon bottle would be a really nice feature considering what you're paying and Kometa is here to answer that call. The bottle is rated, as mentioned earlier, up to 300 bar, which is basically operating pressure. Obviously each one you'll see on the bottle, it will say tested to 500 bar, so she can take the 300, no problem at all. But a very, very, very nice addition and it helps to keep the weight down as well. So, so far a very, very well spec gun. And slightly further up, how could we finish this off without mentioning Kometa, who used their own cold hammer forged barrels. Now we've seen what this can do with our Kometa spring guns, and we have done the Orion PCP, which is sort of like their, I'd say more hunting everyman version of their PCP lineup, great bit of kit. But we're gonna see what it can do on the Lynx, and this laminate, which is no doubt going to be more of a target gun than anything else. So. It's all on the line at the minute. Let's see how well their barrels do on an actual target gun. I've got a good feeling about this, but you never know. And attached for your charge is also Kometa's own silencer, which again, we'll talk a bit more about when we move to that part of the review or even just the handling section and such like that. See if it's actually good or just basically a piece of tat that they've thrown on there. So, you think that's it for features? You're wrong. We're going to have to look on the underside of the gun now because there's more stuff hiding away. You may have noticed already we have got the sling swivels on the underside so you can chuck your sling on there or even a bipod on the front end without having to drill into your gun. That's a really nice feature. I would not like to drill into the laminate on here just simply because I've never liked doing it. The fact they've done it for us is superb. On top of that, you've also got the Kometa logo in the underside of the grip, which I think is a really, really nice little piece of uh, attention to detail on there. And I do like it when brands put their own flair on the guns and such, even the cheaper stuff like the Remington rifles and things like that. The fact that they went out their way to put the R on the underside and Kometa have put this on the underside, I think it's great. I love to see stuff like that. And as we move further along, a really, really nice feature is the fact that the probe is actually built into the rifle. So you don't have to fiddle about looking for it and it's not a threaded probe. You can literally just put your whip on the end of it and fill the sucker up, simple as. So real nice features there. The other thing is, as I'm sure you can guess, the rifle comes with a multi-shot mag. However, because we're doing these as a package, because we think it's a pretty amazing gun, to be fair with you, it's a great looking thing as well, and we thought we'd make the most of it. We're also, a Big Dan's Air Gun's gonna give you the single shot tray to go with it free of charge. We're also giving you the case to go with it free of charge. And on top of that, you can have a scope. We'll put a selection up of scopes you can choose and spec out for basically whichever situation or scenario you want to use the rifle in. So, and of course you can get in touch with me and I'll talk you through which one I'd personally recommend. They will be the Kona scopes. They're cracking bits of kit. Japanese lenses on them are standard and very, very fine crosshairs as well, which is what I'm a huge fan of. So great bits of kit to go with it. The other thing that is the absolute icing on the cake, however, is the fact that the rifle comes with a lifetime warranty, which is mega, to be honest. You don't get that on many guns, especially not from a manufacturer like that, but you'll get a lifetime warranty on there from us. So hopefully it's a package that will also obviously last you a lifetime. But that's it for features. We don't want to drag this on any longer. It's taken too long already. So when it comes to money to spec ratio, we think the Lynx is doing bloody good. It's earned its place so far to be a thousand pounds plus. However, let's move on now to how it shoulders and such. Because if it shoulders like you're shouldering a shovel, it doesn't matter if it's 10 pounds. If you can't shoulder it and hit a thing with it, it's rubbish. So let's put it up there and see what we think. Okay, so loading the mag. This can be a little bit of a faff, but it's not too bad. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab the tray, you can see through, see here on the top of the mag itself, and just grab that and spin it around. And you'll feel the spring is going under tension when that's being done. Now what makes it fiddly is the first pellet, you're gonna to need to load skirt first into the back of the magazine. So the dome essentially is poking through the top. You can see I'm fumbling it slightly because I'm looking through a camera and doing it at the same time. But it goes plop, just like that. And then that essentially will lock the rotor in place so you can load the rest straight through the top like so. So it's not the 
easiest, sorry about that, I just punched you in the face. It's not the easiest mag to load, but at the same time, it's not too bad either. We've definitely had far, far worse. So that's it for loading the magazine. Let's put it all in our shoulder now and see how it all comes together. Okay, so handling, what do we think of the Lynx? It's a funny animal because it's a big old gun. Hang on, if I just pan it out a little bit for you. It's a big old thing, but I tell you what, it actually handles like a much smaller gun. Now, obviously the carbon bottle is going to be doing a lot of that, and I still wouldn't say it was a featherweight gun. It still definitely got a little heft there. We'll put the weight in the description or in something down the bottom there. But it's the length of pull as well. If you take a look, because of the design of the stock, the length of pull is actually quite short on this. So when you're shouldering it, it feels like a much smaller gun. Now I am tucking in a little bit, if you can see that there, just to get myself on target. But to be fair with you, I actually quite like it. I think that's quite nice. Maybe a dear little bit more length would have been good, but at the end of the day, I can't complain about that at all. The other thing I'm going to mention that I like is the fact that the checkering is definitely not, as we call it, stripper rules. You can touch it as well as see it. In fact, I doubt you're going to see it now. If you look on the corner of that finger, you can see the marks coming through there. Apologies about the shaky hand then. I promise you I'm not a uh, crack addict. It's more the fact that I'm holding my hand at a funny angle. <clears throat> Just kidding. Um, but the other thing I'll say that I like is the trigger guard. What's going on here? Because it's actually quite clever. Because if you put your hands where they expect you to put your hand, that guard actually rests against basically almost the palm of your hand there, basically stabilizing the gun. For instance, if I hold it like this and concentrate, I can basically keep that gun balancing itself, more or less. That's a clever little bit of thought they put into this. The other thing that's interesting is the safety too. Because the safety out the box, it's a little stiff. It's very solid, make no mistake. You can hear the metal work going on in there, but a little bit stiff. You can actually loosen a screw in there to loosen that safety up if you was to want to. Again, didn't have to do that, but they went out of the way and put that in there. The design of it is nice as well. The fact that the bar itself, yes, it is near the trigger. Obviously, it's in front of it, which is actually where I like it, to be honest. But the bar is nice and wide. It can be attacked from the left and the, the left and right side. And you don't actually have to get your finger anywhere near the blade of the trigger. You can just push it from the side. And the gun is perfectly safe. So, again, well thought out bit of kit. Right, let's do the fun stuff now. Let's load the mag. So, the magazine's got little jaws, if you can see that there, which is going to bite into the bar right here. So, side lever back. Let's have a play. It's spring-assisted on opening, which is nice. Loose in the middle. And you can feel it just pushing on that hammer spring as we pull it back at the rear of its stroke. Oops, missed it there. So we've got the teeth there on the bar. As we give it a little bit more pressure, that then just locks into place like so. And then side lever closes up and jobs are good. And so the side lever is so smooth when you bring that back as well. Did you notice there was no click when we pulled it back? Have a little listen in a second. Tell me if you can hear anything. So safety is off. Let's have a little go at that trigger now. So. Right out. It's interesting. So we've got first stage, second stage, we've hit a brick wall now, and then it breaks. That's quite nice. It's weird, and I'm sure if you used to adjust it, you could make it just a two stage trigger, but hear that? No click. I'll shut up properly next time. But yeah, that's an interesting beast. So, little finger to show it's very, very light. In fact, I'll just use the corner of my little finger. Pointer in a safe direction. So you got second. Very, very consistent second. Nice and light too on first. Third. And then she goes. That, I think I misjudged the second stage where it broke into third there. I said it too early, but never mind. Yeah, that is really quite nice. Now, with adjustment, you can just make that a two-stage unit. There is a second adjuster screw there, which you can wind in, and that will just close up that second stage. So it's just stop, bang, and that's it. But that's really interesting. I don't know why I come out and set them up like that out the factory, but I tell you what, I could get used to that. Second, stop, bang. Yeah, weird beast, but we'll have a little play with the trigger later on, and if we get time, that is anyway, and we'll see if we can make that, like we said, just second break, hair trigger almost. But that is a very well sorted bit of kit, and it does rest in the shoulder really quite nicely. So handling-wise, it gets pretty much full marks. I especially like this design, and I love that checkering on there too. 
Right then, so let's get the chronograph out now and see what she does through, I was going to say down the range, but obviously that's not the case. Let's see what numbers we get, I'll say. So I'm not really looking forward to this. Can't someone else do it? This is going to go on forever. Okay, so apologies for abruptly cutting the chronograph section short. Basically, I didn't switch the camera off. The camera switched the camera off because it was overheating. Despite the wind, 
It is actually, you can probably see the muggy sky up there, it is actually very, very hot, and the poor little bug has switched itself off. Anyways, we had already put 230 shots through the gun, and it was still going very strongly. If you can see here, we're still sitting at about 100 and, I don't know what you call that, 106, well, more than 60, maybe 180 bar-ish, 190 bar, if you can see that, that's 300 touching the red there. So it still had a hell of a long way to go. The regulators on these, I believe, are set at around the 110 bar mark-ish, so it still has a ton of shots left in it. Sadly, we're not going to be able to push it to its full potential today, but we can have a guesstimate that it's probably, considering we put 230 through it already, it's probably going to soldier on potentially for another 100 plus shots. So it's got, it's a well set up gun and it's got more than enough air going through it. Anyways, we're not going to spoil too much here. Let's head over to the chronograph breakdown and take a look at it in a bit more detail.
well that was interesting pellets that i expected to do well here actually didn't um, usually Cometa barrels love Superdome and such like that along with the JSB Express pellets however here they misbehaved you can see the Superdome's actually put one of the worst groups out if you can call that a group and we'll just pan, <coughs> excuse me, pan across quickly so you can see the rest of the groups here which to be honest are absolutely god awful the gold stars confuse me because the gold stars are like they're trying to be an absolutely amazing group but then both sides fell out with each other and they can't bear to be next to each other it's like they're staring each other down there if you can see that if you could just squeeze them together you'd have a nice group on your hands but it was not to be as we come down we can see the super fields here which were our first okay ish group after this we have the norma s target match which actually tried that could have been in better conditions because we did have a little bit of gust today we could have had a nice group on the go. You can probably hear the wind blowing into the camera now. The Expresses, these upset me a bit because I thought these were going to be a lot better than what they were. We've got a bit of a vertical string going there. And also with the exact heavies, we've got something that's almost resembling a nice group, but not quite. But let's do the worst of the best groups first. We have the Norma Golden Trophy FTs. These put out a five pence group. That's four shots through the top hole and one, I believe, just slightly low, if you can see that there. And then we have the JSB Exact 8.44s. That is freaking phenomenal there. In fact, you can see I've put, I can't remember if this is an Exact or if that's a Express JSB. I put in that group there. One flyer off to the right, which is just not quite. Oh, where's that pellet gone? There it is. It's not quite in the main cluster. That could, again, could be a little bit wind, could be me pulling it. I think looking at the four shot group, we can say it's probably user error for being honest with each other but there's that pellet in there now it doesn't get that much better than that does it that's pretty damn good so with that we're going to eliminate the rest of the pellets here and we're going to move on at our 45 yard mark with the norma golden trophy fts and jsb exact 8.44s this could be really interesting but i think it could also be really rather good as well so let's see what the links can do when we stretch our legs However, before we get to the final verdict, I've had a thought. And again, apologies for the wind noise. Once again, this is to hammer in the fact that although it's beautiful, it's not the calmest day today. I've had a thought. Well, considering how I said the barrel had been flipping up and down a little bit when we were shooting off the rest, and I will confess, I am not the best rested shooter on the planet. I thought, well, why don't we do what we do sometimes on this channel and have a few shots, elbows on knees, once again, still at our 40 yard mark. And you can see the chair is right there. Target is still where it was before. And we're gonna walk straight back, have a few shots. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little science experiment. I'm gonna do one group with me sort of holding the gun, almost trying to replicate sort of like how that rest was back there. So the gun can more or less do what it wants. And the second group I'm gonna do is me holding the rifle slightly more securely. And we're gonna see the difference in the groups, if there is any at all, which if my hunch is correct, I think with the rifle slightly more secured, I think we're gonna potentially match what we managed to get back there a moment ago with the rest in place. So let's have a little play with that. Let's see how we do and hope that I don't embarrass myself any more than usual.
Okay, so accuracy testing is over and done with, and I will confess I've been a little bit sneaky. What I did was basically off camera, obviously we've zeroed the gun in at the 45 yard mark, and I noticed that the Normas were absolutely terrible at 45, despite how they shot at 27. So with that, although it is still a bit gusty every now and again, in fact, I've left the lapel mics off the camera, so you might even hear it blowing into the camera in a second. It's a much calmer day than when we did the 27 yard testing. So I thought, do you know what? Let's get the JSB Exact Expresses back out and see what the gun can do with them. And I'm very glad that I did because they were absolutely superb. Now we've got one flyer, which I think I can explain in a minute, but that is pretty damn superb. Considering, that, like I said, it's still gusty today. In fact, if I just come up, you can see the shadow of the tree blowing there. It's not very calm, but Considering the weather conditions, I don't think anybody's going to complain about that at all. In fact, I'd even be as brazen as to say, if this was being shot at an indoor range with a better rest, which I think is possibly our problem with this gun um, and that backpack, we would have had a very, very solid, probably one whole group at 45. With the standard JSBs, things were still pretty good. We had two flyers, and this is what I mean. You can see with the flyers, they're basically touching at that range, but What's happening as we're pulling the trigger, I can see it happening down the scope. It's flicking like this just a little bit. And I think what's happening is where this gun has got such a long barrel on it, the lock time is maybe not quite as quick as what it could have been. If I could have a chat with Kometa and say, because don't get me wrong, the gun is, as you can tell, it's a laser beam. And if you've got a proper rest, I'm sure it'd be absolutely fantastic. It's pretty fantastic without it. But if I could take a Cometa, maybe carbine that barrel about there and just have that threaded or what have you. Just chop that barrel length down a bit so that lock time is a bit quicker. This gun, I think, would be even better than what it is now. And as mentioned, it's already pretty damn stellar. Again, 27 yards with the JSB Expresses, it was basically one little hole with one tiny little flyer off to the right. It is a stupendously accurate gun. The other thing I'm going to show you as well is we did have a little play with the trigger. Now you might remember in the handling section I said it maybe felt a bit more like a three stage than a two stage. It sort of, you pulled it first, stop, second, stop, and then third, bang. It wasn't actually that unpleasant. In fact, I could have quite easily got used to that, but I thought I'd have a play with it because I felt like there was a really good two stage trying to break out of that trigger unit there. And I'm glad that I did because watch this. I haven't touched the silver screw at the rear. All I've used is the first and second adjustment in that trigger blade. Watch this. So I'll show you it bouncing off second. You can see that there. Nice and light, not too much movement. Apologies if the wind is hitting the camera now. So that's not too much movement, that's second, and then brake. And that's that, and you can see how little effort I put in my finger then. It is a fantastic bit of kit, and I wish Cometa would perhaps set them up a bit more like this out of the box. But in general, performance-wise, downrange, I don't think that absolutely anybody is going to be complaining about what you can see there. Anyways, that's it for accuracy testing. Let's move on now to the final verdict and see just what we think of the Cometa Lynx laminate. Okay, so final verdict of the Cometa Lynx Laminate V10 SPR. What do we like? What don't we like? Well, you know this channel by now, we do the negatives first. So, first thing I mentioned, not really a negative because it was quite nice, but the trigger is more of a three stage out the box than a nice crisp two stage. This does irk me a little bit, and it's the same with the, tr the triggers on the spring guns Cometa do as well. You can make a really nice trigger out of these as we showed earlier, and that's not even with adjusting the chrome screw at the back there you saw how nice and crisp and light that second stage was. But they come out of the box like a weird three stage. I don't know why they do that. Don't get me wrong, it's actually quite nice. I didn't mind that the, the feel of the trigger out the box at all, but two stage, for me at least at this moment in time, or even a nice crisp single stage, is always that little bit better. The other thing is, it is a long gun. If you can see this, I'm coming back quite far now to get the beast in the frame. It's not for the faint of heart or those looking for an ultra compact hunting gun. In fact, it's not going to make a massively brilliant hunting gun full stop because number one, the size, it's not actually that heavy when you shoulder it. It's a very well balanced gun. And I especially like the trigger guard as well, the way it's designed, so you can rest against it. But it's long. The other thing is, it is pretty much it's bright green, fluorescent green. You're not going to be hiding from anything with this. 
That said, they do, as probably many will know watching this, they do do a standard Lynx, which comes with a metal bottle on the front end, at least to my knowledge. I don't think they're putting a carbon on there at the minute, but it would be nice if they did. Um, and that just comes with a nice sort of dark, almost chocolate looking stock. Now that would be an excellent bit of kit for hunting. Other negatives. Um, it's not much, to be honest. The pressure gauge is a little off. Um, I noticed when we filled it up, we had it on the um, compressor when we did before we did the shot count test. It was reading about 280-ish. Um, but when we uh, actually looked at the, the gauge on the gun, it was reading bang on 300. So it's about 20 bar out, give or take. It's not a massive issue. Most PCPs are like it. And we always say as well, look at your filling equipment gauge. Don't go by the gun. The other thing is the fill probe is a little fiddly to get to when you take that off. Um, but again, nitpicking, really. Um, right, so now we get to the positives, which are, there's quite a lot of them. Number one, it's incredibly well made. That laminate stock is one of the nicest I've seen. I love the Lynx logo in the side there, you can see. And I love the Cometa logo in the base of the grip there. And obviously the checkering in the grip too is really nice. And I like the way they've designed the laminate to really pop on that grip. And obviously you've got the adjustable cheek piece as well. Good components, you've got a carbon fibre bottle on the front end, which is really nice to see. The silencer is actually quite nice as well, which I didn't expect. Most sort of come with the gun silencers are sometimes a bit naff, but it's actually not too bad at all. It's not going to be threatening your Hogan decimeters or anything like that anytime soon. But at the same time, there's far, far worse on the market than that. Um, the other thing that's great is the regulator, that lane reg. And again, we saw that when we got to the chronograph section where Again, I'm not going to mention names, but there's a gun company, a very famous one, shall we say, that makes guns, and they brought out a rifle. Um, where in the advertising sort of blurb for it, they say guaranteed sub uh, two feet per second standard deviation over a 10-shot string. Um, we got a sub two feet per second standard deviation over about 197 shots. <laughs> and this is what leads me back over to here as well, because this vertical string is not the gun i can guarantee you that i know this sounds like salesman talk but you can see in the chronograph results it was wickedly consistent the whole way through to the point where the only one or two little spikes that we had were blatantly pellets because the next 100 shots after that were absolutely flat i think at one point we had like five duplicate shots i think um, but the gun is wickedly accurate. You do have to make sure that you're, say, securing it, I'll say correctly. It did fl throw a flyer with me and two flyers here, which really annoyed me as well. The barrel is fantastic. And again, you can see that in the group. For instance, there's two shots that went low, but look at the horizontal spread here. There is basically none. If I had a rest that was more designed for a large gun like this, that would have been... I'm, willing to bet and again you can salesman talk shill me as much as you want in the comments that would have been one hole at 45 yards in fact again as you may know that's why we did the third group here we can see elbows on knees so no rest none of that completely exposed by the wind i've not even got the barn protecting me here and you can see the first group where i'm sort of letting the gun do its thing throwing them everywhere however the second group if you can see that the complete opposite and that is with me just not ripping it and ripping it but just securing the gun as i'm shouldering it shouldering it and you can see there that is night and day difference in fact even with the flyer if i can just wangle that a tiny little bit that is pretty much hang on wait pretty much bang on a 20 pence group at 45 yards in what was earlier gusty conditions as well this is what i mean it is stupendously accurate it is a fantastic bit of gear i nearly cursed then i won't i'll be good <laughs> Close one though, wasn't it? You could hear what was coming. But yeah, it's a fantastic bit of kit. It really is. Again, not perfect. It's a long beast. In fact, Cometa, if you're watching, apologies if I've said this already, cut that barrel off for sub 12, just a little bit, say to there, and then put the silencer on here. Or better yet, they do this model in, or this rifle, the Lynx, in a shrouded and silenced shrouded version. Cut it there, and then put that lovely chunky baffled shroud up to maybe the bottle, maybe just a little ahead what a cracking gun that would be but we're rambling a little bit now so what do we like accuracy pretty much a 10 out of 10 um shot count wise well we had to stop at 180 bar with 230 shots going through it with no real sign of it giving up well above 11 feet pound still um and we had used like i said i filled it i believe about 280 290 ish on the compressor and we stopped at 180 so we got about 200 shots out of about 100 bar 
That's not bad, is it? <laughs> These regulators are set to about 110 bar, I believe. Um, and again, like we said, it's the Robert Lane rig, so it's no wonder it was this good. And that's out the box too, not even run in. So let that sink in. Um, I mean, this thing could have gone on for maybe even, well, 300 plus would be a very safe bet. It's a fantastic bit of kit, but just bear in mind, it's big, it's mainly a bench rest gun, and make sure, obviously, that you have got something, a, a grip that it's going to agree with, and just hold it nice and secure. If you try and just let it float about and do its own thing, and shoot it off a backpack, I mean, what idiot do that? Um, it might flip a little bit on you and such like that, but that's it for the Cometa Lynx review. As mentioned, we're supplying this rifle on our website, if you take a look, with the hard case and single shot tray all chucked in free of charge, and also with the Kona scopes as well. We've also got some other scopes hopefully coming to our way soon, so we'll see if we can add them to a potential choice as well. So you can pick whichever scope you think would do best with the job, and we'll sit, set all of that up for you for £1,350. That, I think, is pretty damn good, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks ever so much for watching. Next, we're going to be looking at the Reximex Lyra, and then after that, I think it's time we do a face-off between a HW97 and an Air Arms TX200, don't you? Anyways, that's it for this video review. Thanks ever so much, and we'll see you next time.